So at the beginning of every salon, we have an invocation, and tonight's invocation begins a little spooky. Around 200 years ago, a young woman, just about 18 years old, sat awake at night, about three in the morning, pondering the stories that she had just heard. The moon and the stars were shrouded by fog and low-hanging clouds that surrounded her house, and the fire in the hearth downstairs had long since extinguished. And as she lay her head to her pillow, she began to think and dilate upon so very hideous an idea. Several weeks earlier, this young woman had gone on vacation with her husband, and they were joined by a friend of theirs, a doctor named John, and another friend of theirs, a woman named Claire, who was actually having an affair with her traveling partner, a man named George. And the weather had just been horrendous for months, probably, uh, at least for days and weeks, and that was actually the result of the distant volcanic eruption of Tambora, I'm a geologist, I can't help it. Uh, this link, by the way, would not be put together for like many, many years later. But anyway, due to this foul weather caused by a volcanic eruption in geology, they decided to sit around telling stories to each other. And at night, it turned to ghost stories. And as they were sitting around reading ghost stories, it was George, of all people, who said, you know what? I think we should have a contest. We should write ghost stories ourselves. Something to, I have to get this right, something that sparks the mysterious fear in our nature and awakens thrilling horror. Because <laughs> that's a thing that people did back then. So, they all agreed. They said, sure, we have all these ghost stories, we're definitely going to do this. And they started writing, every single one of them, except for the young woman. She had nothing. Her mind was blanker than blank. Until late one night, she overheard her husband, Percy, talking to George, better known as Lord Byron. <laughs> and Percy and Lord Byron we're discussing some new experiments with electricity, and when you shock the legs of a dead frog, the frog's legs seem to come back to life. And as she went upstairs, she stayed awake until about three in the morning, when the fog and clouds had surrounded her mansion and the fire in the hearth downstairs had long since extinguished when an idea jumped into her head. And she wrote, I saw the pale student of unhallowed arts kneeling beside the thing he had put together. I saw the hideous phantasm of a man stretched out and then on the working of some powerful engine show signs of life and stir with an uneasy half vital motion. Frightful must it be, for supremely frightful would be the effect of any human endeavor to mock the stupendous mechanism of the creator of the world. She was 18 when she wrote that. <laughs> it's just not fair. Um, as some of you may have surmised, this young woman was Mary Shelley, and that idea that leapt into her mind became Frankenstein. And I wanted to open tonight's salon all about epiphanies with the story of Mary Shelley's epiphany, not only because Frankenstein is my favorite book of all time, but because I think that this epiphany really speaks to the true definition of the term. Ideas don't just leap into our heads from nothing. We pick up pieces here, we pick up pieces there, we maybe are inspired by this and we kind of forget that until finally something ignites and we have that one idea as evidenced by Mary Shelley's own handwritten manuscript of the first copy of Frankenstein, it's not fully formed. You can see her notes and she changes it and molds it finally into the thing that we know and love. 
but it all comes back to that singular moment when all of the ideas came together to form the epiphany. And so for tonight's invocation, I'm gonna let Mary Shelley say far more eloquently what I've just tried to say. Everything must have a beginning, and that beginning must be linked to something that went before. Invention, it must be humbly admitted, does not consist in creating out of void, but out of chaos. It can give form to dark, shapeless substances, but cannot bring into being the substance itself. And so, as you listen to all of tonight's talks on epiphanies, I encourage all of you to think of those details that made up the chaos. What was it that was rattling around in everyone's heads, and why was it that some of those details seem to come together in this one truly beautiful, brilliant moment of epiphany? And with that, I would like everyone here to welcome our six speakers uh, for the evening, Muriel Gordon, Lilia Gutnick, Aaron Laycook, Mark Lindsay, Casey Selden, and Dan Von Hoyle. <laughs>